Hey everyone, welcome back to iTower. Today we're diving into a topic that's been showing up more and more often in coding interviews, especially for mid and senior roles, and that's the priority queue. If you've been preparing for technical interviews lately, you might have already seen this. Interviewers love it because it tests how well you understand data structures, but also how you think about organizing and managing tasks when not everything has the same importance. But even outside of interviews, this is something that shows up in real applications more than you'd expect. Whether you're writing backend services in JavaScript, working with Go or Java or Python, the concept is the same. A priority queue is a foundational structure. It helps you manage things based not just on when they arrived, but on how important they are. Let's take a second to understand what problem this solves. Normally in a queue, the first thing that goes in is the first thing that comes out. But in real life and in software, some things just can't wait. Imagine you're building a system that handles background jobs. Some jobs can wait, but others, like a payment confirmation or a system alert, need to be processed immediately. Or maybe you're working on a game and the AI decisions need to react based on how dangerous a situation is. Or you're handling user events where some updates are urgent, like a loading spinner, and others can be delayed. A priority queue gives us the ability to say, this task matters more, so handle it first, regardless of when it was added. And while JavaScript doesn't have a built-in priority queue class, we can absolutely build one ourselves. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video, step by step, line by line. Before we jump into the code, make sure to like the video if you're excited about this topic and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow and you stay up to date with all our tutorials. All right, let's get started. We'll begin by defining the structure. First, we create a class called priority queue. Inside the constructor, we define an empty array called items. This will store the elements in our queue and each element will have two pieces of data, a value and a priority. Now let's add a method to insert items into the queue in the correct order. We define a method called enqueue, which takes two arguments. The first is the actual value we want to add to the queue. The second is the priority number. And in this implementation, a lower number means higher priority. We then create a new object with these two values. Next, we create a Boolean flag called added. We set it to false for now, and we'll use it to check whether we successfully inserted our item at the right position. Then we loop through every existing item in the queue using a for loop. At each step, we compare the priority of the new item with the one that's already there. If the new item has higher priority, which means its priority number is lower, we insert it before the current item using splice. That keeps our queue ordered from highest to lowest priority. Once we insert it, we mark added as true and exit the loop. Now we check whether the item was inserted during the loop. If not, that means it has the lowest priority so far, and we add it to the end of the queue using push. Next, we'll implement a method to remove and return the highest priority item from the queue. We define a method called dequeue. It uses shift to remove the first item in the array and return it. And because we inserted items in priority order, the first item will always be the one with the highest priority. Now we'll add a method to simply check the next item without removing it. This method is called peak and it just returns the first item in the queue. We don't modify the array here, we only look at the next item that would be removed. Finally, let's add a method to check whether the queue is empty. This method returns true if the queue has no items and false otherwise. It's a simple utility, but useful in many scenarios when we want to avoid processing an empty queue. So now we've got our class ready. Let's test this in action with a simple example. First we create a new priority queue instance. Then we add three tasks with different priority levels. Even though the first task was added before the others, the one with priority one comes out first because it's the most important. Then we get the one with priority three and finally the task with priority five. So what we've done here is built a working efficient way to manage things based on urgency, not order. And that's something you can use in your own projects right away. This principle is language agnostic, whether you're coding in Java, Python or C++. The idea of a priority queue is always the same. 
important things come first. So now you know not only how priority queue works in theory, but how to implement one in JavaScript from scratch. Try playing around with it, test how it handles larger inputs, experiment with different sorting logic, or even integrate it with timers, requests, or task systems. And remember, if you're preparing for interviews, this is the kind of structure that's absolutely worth mastering. If this video helped you, give it a like, leave a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe to iTower for more in-depth tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.